Welcome to Time Valley Motorhomes. I'm Callum and this is the handover of a Chasson 610 Welcome Premium. So starting the walk around on the driver's side of the motorhome first, the first point you get to is your LPG locker, which is where you put your gas bottle on board. We've got our bottle on, which is a six kilogram propane bottle and the motorhome does run off propane. So to open all of your external locks, you've got a habitation key, which is your small black key. And then to connect the gas cylinder, so you've got a pipe, which is known as the pigtail, which is the orange pipe. So what you've got to do is, with the being gas, it's opposite thread, so it's not righty tighty lefty loosey. It's righty, right to loosen and left to tighten with it being the opposite way. So you hand tighten, and then you'll need a gas spanner like this or an adjustable wrench to just nip it up onto the cylinder. And all you need to do is nip it on, turn the cylinder on at the top of the bottle. Once you've turned it on, only a couple of turns, not all the way. Press the button, which is there's a black little button here on the pigtail. So if you have a look, there's a black little button, you'll see. Which you just need to press once you've turned the cylinder on. Just allows the gas through on the crash valve. Turn the cylinder off before you travel and always make sure it's strapped in top and bottom. I've just put the top one on to illustrate how to strap the bottle in, but you strap it top and bottom before traveling once you put your gas bottle on. Coming further around, you've got your Fiamma awning, which we can show you on collection. We've got your external gas point, so instead of carrying a spare bottle to do some outdoor cooking, it uses the bottle on board the vehicle. You'll get a quick release connector and some gas hosing and two Jubilee clips to clip everything together. Pop it in here, turn your tap on, which is a red isolation tap, just to allow the gas to this point, and then that'll connect to the external barbecue or cadaver. Two fridge vents and you do have your own and light above your habitation door. Located behind the back wheel is your waste water. So this is any water that you've put down any plug hole. It's very important that when you leave site, you get rid of your dirty water because you don't want to be driving around with it because it's just going to add weight and it's going to use more fuel and mean that you can't put, your payload will be impacted because of the water. So what you want to do is you want to drive over the grid on the way out of the site and you want to pull the handle and the water will come out. Leave this open ajar when, drive, when driving home and it will loose and rock any loose water out of the system. So you want to leave it open and in the winter you want to make sure that this is fully drained off to avoid frost damage. So just leave it open to avoid any water freezing there when we're experiencing colder temperatures. Above here you do have your cassette, so again with the habitation key you can open your loo door, which is your cassette door. And to get the cassette out you'd lift the orange handle and slide it out. When you've slid it out you can either carry it or you can wheel it to your waste disposal point which is normally beside your toilet block and all you need to do to empty is remove the grey cap, pop that to one side, press the orange button on the back of the cassette which just allows air in when tipping it out just to stop it glugging. So tip the contents out, once you've done that there is normally a tap near the disposal point, pop some water in, give it a rinse, tip out again before going in with a cap full of liquid, which is 120 ml. So you can measure green or blue liquid in here, or you can just do by eye and pop it in here. So you can measure it, tip it in there, or you can just think, pour the liquid in there, and always put about 120 ml of liquid into the cassette. Once you've done that, you can then just pop it back on board, and it'll clip back into place. Here we have your garage, and in the garage you do have a light, tethering rails for tying bits and pieces down, it's heated, it's got 240 volt and it's got 12 volt in here, 
and you can see there you've got your carpet, your own unwinding handle, your, four, your Fiat cab mat, silver screens and your external shower point. So your external shower point which we'll get to on the other side of the van just is just a fitting which just pushes in and as long as you've got the pump on you'll be able to use your external cold water shower. And underneath that you've got your high level brake light and then you do have a Fiamma Pro C bike carrier on the back of this vehicle. So what you need to do if you're loading your bikes is pull the bike rack down. This is the rails where you want to strap your bike wheels into. So pop the, these are just depending on how big the bike frame is, pop these through the spokes and tie them in and then all you need to do is put these on the crossbars so if you've got your first bike and your second bike and then all you need to do is then put a bike lock around the bike frames and the frame of the bike rack just to avoid them being stolen if you leave the vehicle unattended when you're not using it you can just push it back up and store the arms down like so so now on the passenger side of the vehicle we've got a another long slim garage door and you do have shelves so you can pull them down and store your bits and pieces or if you want to stand skis or surfboard you can in here with the shelves folded up to hook the vehicle up if you're at home and you're home charging the van or you've arrived on your site what you need to do is you need to get your hookup lead lift the collar slide it on here then hook the side up and do it in reverse order when unhooking along with pushing the blue clip down to safely remove the hookup lead from the motorhome but always do it in reverse so that you're never carrying a live lead in your hand so van first then sight and then sight first then van so that you're not walking around with a live power lead this locker here is known as your Technibox locker and in here you have your water filler and your electrics. So to fill the vehicle with water when you arrive on your site, pop your hose pipe into there. Carry your hose pipe with some hose pipe fittings as it's mainly just a brass tap on site. So you will need a few of the different screw on fittings and the push fittings just because some sites are brass taps and some sites you might need the screw, the screw on one with the rubber seal because sometimes they're different taps on site. Flat end of the hose into the van. Flat end of the hose into the van and fill it until it overflows or until you look on board and see how much water you have in there. If you want them to, if you've just filled it up and then you're ready to move site um, the night before, if you just stay on the site. So, this is a travel drain so what that does is it allows all the water out bar 20 litres so you've still got enough to use your own toilet and make yourself a cup of tea so you need to lift that up have the pump on and you'll see the water coming out the van here that's going to drain it all down until 20 litres however if you're winterizing it and you're wanting all the water out or you're wanting the last 20 litres out of the tank if you've taken on a source of contaminated water you need to come underneath the van so underneath the van is your main freshwater drain point and it's just here and all you need to do is turn that white nozzle and that will allow the rest of the water out and that is your freshwater drain so in the winter make sure that this is fully drained off and the valve is left open to avoid any water from freezing and causing any damage to your freshwater system this side you do have your charger so your charger charges the leisure battery when you hooked up the mains you've got your 12 volt fuses which are all listed what they do and um, so do carry some spare blade fuses with you they are just standard not micro blade standard blade fuses which you can get from online or any car factors carry some with you in case a fuse does blow and then you can just lift this cover off pick the fuse out and in the middle of the fuse here you'll see that it's it's intact if that was blown it means your fuse is gone you need a new fuse so and then it's just a case of pushing it back in 
and putting the cover back on. Here you've got your main trip, so if you've tripped the van, try here before you try your main site, as you may have just tripped the motorhome, which is just here. And then you've got two individual fuses in a separate fuse holder. These are for your diesel heater. So if your diesel heater goes to a flashing green light from a solid green light, solid green light means it's working, flashing green light means it's indicating a fault. Turn it off, come out, pull the both fuses out for 30 seconds, pop them back in and go and try and restart your heater. If it's still flashing, you may have to do it again, but obviously make sure you've got a quarter of a tank of diesel or more in your main tank as that's where the intake for the Webasto is compared to where the engine is. But there are your fuses for your diesel heater. Should you be planning on heating your water on gas if you're wild camping, or you are in a desperate need of hot water and you've got both sources on together, which you can do, this cover must come off because it allows the flue, so it allows the fumes out the flue of the van. So hand on the top, thumb in the middle, peel it off. With this cover on, it will fail because you can't get the fumes out of the van. When you're traveling, when you're washing the van, or if you're on electric, you can just leave the cover on. External shower point, which is cold water fed, and the fitting that's in the garage, like I've just shown you, just pushes in there. Make sure the pump's on, and you'll be able to force the dogs, the boots, the bikes off. To fill the vehicle with fuel, using the main ignition key, you do have your diesel filler at the passenger door. Tire pressures here, so five and a half bar, which is 79.5 PSI for your tires, with your tire size on the top there as well. Underneath the passenger seat, you do have your leisure batteries, and you've got two leisure batteries on this vehicle, and you've got your main battery fuse, 20 ampere. Engine battery for the van lives underneath here, so if you ever need to replenish that in the future, or you want to put a charger on, just lift this cover up and you can get to the top of the battery. And you do have your bonnet release just on the side of the dashboard. You've got your various fluids, the main one you're going to need is your screen wash. Then if you lift these three tabs, you can lift this cover off and you put your power steering fluid and your coolant. Followed by your brake fluid, your oil filler and dipstick for checking your levels. Paint codes on this sticker here. Earth and point for giving or receiving a jump start as the main engine battery is underneath the cab floor. And then between your air filter, pop your key in here or a screwdriver, anything flat and you'll be able to lift this little cover up. That's your positive for giving or receiving a jump start. Weight plates, so three and a half ton gross vehicle weight. If you were to put a tow bar on this, you can tow two tons, so five and a half ton trading weight. So that's the van and whatever you can tow in. And then you've got your unique build number in the bottom corner there, that HOKO number is a unique build number from Chasson. So if you ever need any parts, quote that number. So now inside the van, to operate your 12 volt control panel, you've got your master switch for your 12 volt here. So you turn that one on first. If you are hooked up, you'll get this one here, which means that you're hooked up to mains 240 volt, which is the green illuminated light. Put your master switch for your light, and then they all are individually switched around the van. Your pump, making sure that you've got enough water on board, and your boiler's closed, you can turn your pump on to operate your tap, toilet, and shower. Your awning light on the outside of the van, so if you want to turn your light on, that's the switch there. And then these correspond with the buttons on the bottom, so you've got the one of the trailer, which is your leisure battery reading. Take the hook about to get a true reading of your leisure battery. One of the, the truck, which is your engine battery reading. Your fresh water reading here. And it'll go to red once it goes into the red and it's time to refill. And it'll go into the red underneath when the waste is full and it's ready to be emptied. Which tells you your waste water is ready to be drained off as the tank is full. To operate your Abasto diesel heater, you need to make sure that you've got a quarter of a tank of diesel in your main engine tank or more, as it works on a different level to the main engine intake, so it means that you will never run out of diesel should you be running this for a long period of time. But to turn it on, simply turn it on, 
always set it to a higher temperature first as it allows the combustion to start if the lights start flickering that is normal it's just the heater takes such a large draw of 12 volt at first to get going and then once you're happy you can adjust it to the temperature that you want inside of the van to be max is 30 degrees of heat from the wabasto diesel heater and you can use this when traveling to keep your back passengers warm when on the road so directly behind your passenger seat if you remove the cushions in your lounge this is the location of your boiler so your boiler provides hot air as well as heating the water which is a 10 litre water container in the boiler so to drain the boiler off in the winter when you're not using the van and we're experiencing colder temperatures that could potentially freeze the water what you need to do is you need to drain it off and to drain it off there's a little board that goes in here so take that off and you want to flick this yellow tap up and stand it up on end leave it stood up on end during the time you've got the vehicle not in use and leave all the taps within the van open so kitchen tap disconnect your shower head from your shower hose and lie that down in the shower tray just so any water can't coil up in the pipe and drains out hand basin tap you'd open your fresh water drain off point and your waste and then make sure all the water is not sitting in the van because it will freeze in colder temperatures when you come to reuse it, lie your tap down, put your cap back on your fresh, shut your waist, shut all your taps, fill the vehicle with water, cold water. Once you've got cold water on board, you can come in and put your control panel on and turn your pump on. Cold water on the cold side of the tap will automatically come through pressurised because it's drawn it from the main tank as soon as you start going to the hot side this is when it starts transferring the water from the cold water tank into the hot water tank which is your boiler and it'll cough and sputter because it's filling it with 10 litres of water in here until it's pressurised and you get a free flow of water from the hot side of the tap you've got a pressurised water system on the hot water side once you've done one tap do them all but just remember, drain your boilers down in the winter because they're not covered under warranty. It's your responsibility to winterise your vehicle. And to do so, you'd lift that tap up and leave it stood up during the time you've not got the vehicle in use. So I've just been showing you a boiler, which is under here. So on the front of the seats, you do have your two controls. We've so got your Truma boiler on gas and your Truma boiler on electric. So gas, you've got to remove the cover on the side of the vehicle, just beside the passenger door to work. Otherwise, what will happen is the gas won't work because the fumes for the heater will not be allowed to escape the vehicle. So it's a fail safe and it'll come up with a red light, meaning it's failed just because the emissions can't leave the vehicle. So to do the gas, you've got two settings. You've got 50 degrees. And you've got 70 degrees of heat in your water, depending on what temperature you want. And to do the electric, you've got 750 watts at the top. Or you've got the bigger output at the bottom, which is which is 1850. You can use the gas and electric together if you're in desperate need of heating your water. And this will heat your water in around 10 minutes. But if you are on a site, just use your electric. And if you are wild camping, you would just have to use your gas, as you wouldn't have any electric there. So to use your toilet, ensure that the pump's on and behind you've got a blue button which is your fresh water flush. So if you press it, put a small amount of water in the toilet before you use the toilet which helps lubricate the seal between the top of the cassette and the bottom of the toilet. But before you use the toilet, you'll want to ensure that you've opened the blade so the hatch doesn't get dirty. So what you need to do is open the blade which is this grey lever here, so slide that to your right you can now use the toilet. After use, if you give it a good flush with the glue button. If you've got any pink, obviously there's nowhere for the pink to go because it isn't a separate header tank on a motorhome. It's fed off the main fresh water tank. So what you can do is dilute the pink with some water into an empty spray bottle, spray the bowl, give it a flush, and then close 
the blade once you've used the toilet. This will ensure that when the cassette is full, which will indicate on the back here, with three green lights underneath the diagram of the cassette here, you'll be able to pull the cassette straight out the side of the van and empty it. If the blade, this handle, was to be left open, the cassette won't come out the outside of the van because it's locked into place. So you've got to make sure that this is closed to get the cassette out. Bathroom light is on the side of the sink unit. Got a to toilet cabinet there, some there, and some here with a hanging reel for your towels. Just your hot water. So your water is getting up the temperature there as it is hot. That's your hot water system working as it should. Behind the large mirrors you do have a wardrobe with shelving. This is your infill cushion for the lounge which I'll show you how that makes up out of the sofas and the table into a bed as your second double bed. Ensuring that your shower screens are tied back before you travel. Ensure that when you are winterizing you Take off your shower head from the hose, just unscrew it from the hose and lie this hose in the tray with the mixer taps of all taps left open just to ensure that any water inside the, the taps and pipelines behind the furniture drains out and nothing stays and freezes. Hanging reel for towels or coats if you've been caught in the rain, hang them and they'll drip dry in here and open. This skylight you just wind the skylight open but ensure all skylights and windows are closed before you do start traveling again so in the kitchen area you've got one electric hot plate which is this side which will work when you hooked up and it'll illuminate with the red light other than that you've got two gas burners And always make sure that everything's cool enough before you put the glass lid down, otherwise you will smash the glass if it's too warm. And underneath, you've got a grill. An oven even. And then above, a grill. Storage underneath, storage to the side with a gas isolation valve tap just in the bottom for your cooker and grill and oven and even the, the hob, should I say. Um, and that'll isolate the gas supply to this whole unit. But any problems with gas, we do recommend you turn the bottle off to be safe. It's mainly for when the vehicle is annually serviced that so we'll test each gas appliance by shutting one appliance off at a time. Cutlery tray is here, and you do have a mains 240 volt socket which will only work when you're hooked up. Your table switch has its electronic, which we'll get onto further in the video, and your electric drop down bed switch. To use these switches, you've got to have the main light circuit turned on on the panel, which I've shown you at the start of the video. Storage, storage, and some more storage in there. Make sure you've got the pump on and we've had the hot water on there and that water is hot. So that's your hot water working as it should as it can see the steam coming off the water. So to operate your Fetford fridge with freezer compartment, the control panel is in the middle. So you just press and hold and turn it on or off depending on if you're storing it or if you're using it and then this button here changes the source so you'll notice A is illuminated and there's a picture of a plug A stands for automatic energy selection so it picks the best source available to the motorhome at any one time and it will always prioritize mains electric so we've got a gas bottle on but we're hooked up and you can see it's on mains so it's acting like a household fridge on 240 volt. However, if I was to unhook the van, it would switch over to gas by itself and self-ignite. Or if I was to start the vehicle's engine, 
it would switch over to battery, which isn't off your leisure battery, it's off your engine battery when the engine's physically running. And what that's designed to do is it's designed to maintain the temperature that it was already at. So it'll get no warmer, but it'll get no cooler. It'll act like a cool box and just keep your shopping nice and fresh until you either hook it back up or select gas. However, if you want to manually select a source, all you need to do is to get rid of the air is press here and we're on mains. We're on battery and it's a code 7 loss of 12 volt because the engine's not running. Or we're on gas. Note that it does wait 20 minutes before lighting on gas once you've knocked the engine off. So if you are going wild camping, it will fail for 20 minutes because it's a safety feature that's built in in case you've left your gas bottle open. The last thing you want is to pull in for diesel and for this to be sparking on gas with the gas supply turned on because you forgot it, where there's naked fumes of petrol. So it does wait 20 minutes before lighting on gas so you'd have to just manually select it like it is now by just pressing here this is your temperature so one being the warmest five being the coldest have it on five when you're pre-chilling when you put your shopping in just put it on three or four just so it doesn't freeze your shopping and if you are lucky enough to keep this at home what i would do is a couple of days before you go away hook the van up charge the leisure batteries turn the fridge on allow that to chill the, if the night before put your shopping in allow that to chill and then when you are ready to drive away as long as it's on a start the engine on automatic and it'll switch over by itself or you can manually select 12 volt and start the engine and drive to your site here you do have a heater which just stops this control panel from steaming up and stops the doors from sticking with the rubber seal when the fridge and freezer is on its optimum temperature and then when you're not using it, knock it off, clean it out. Underneath each, you do have a little toggle. So you need to slide the little toggle out, pop that into here, just to keep the door jar. Same with the freezer compartment. And what that does is it allows air to circulate in and out to avoid smells from forming in the fridge and freezer. So to make the occasional bed underneath, because this is a four berth, so you can create the sofas into a bed, make sure your table's like this, but you can spin the table round by using the handle, by pressing it and you can spin the table round, but you always want the hinges to be this side. And then you'd pull the extension out, push it as far over as possible. And then you want to drop the table down into position on this switch there fills the void like so and then you use the infill cushions so you've got two infill cushions the one with the shape to edge goes here and the one that's square goes into there like so, and you've created a double bed. Above, using the switch next to it, you've got your drop down bed. So you can stop this at any height and use the ladder, which clips on here. So it clips on there, you bring it down a bit more. And then there you do have a four berth motorhome. Or if it was just two, what you can do is, you can bring this bed all the way down till it's on top of the sofas. But make sure that you take your pillows off and make sure your duvet doesn't get trapped near the bulkhead here because there's a switch there for the light. And if it's trapped a quilt or a, or a sheet in there, it'll not use the contact. But that is your sleeping arrangements on the Chasson 610. And the best place to store the ladder is underneath the bed there.